This is a grenade, a fire extinguisher grenade. The idea behind this is you would throw it into a raging inferno. The glass would shatter, releasing the chemical in it, and the heat of the fire would cause it to vaporize, extinguishing the fire. The chemical in the grenade is not just boring, ordinary water. It is a chemical that I hold near and dear. If exposed to, it can wreak havoc on the central nervous system and liver. The chemical is carbon tetrachloride. Carbon tetrachloride was once a prevalent household chemical. Carbon tetrachloride was used in lava ramps, refrigerants, and fire extinguishers. A few different styles of fixed extinguishers exist that contain carbon tetrachloride. The two main styles are a brass style, which is just a cancer squirt gun, and the other is the glorious fire extinguisher grenade. These grenades can be found in many old farmhouses in my area. The extinguishers would be placed atop a metal stand that would either drop or fling the carbon tetrachloride when the spring flings it, which is activated by heat of fire. These extinguishers were phased out due to their ability to kill more people when activated than the fire would. When released into the room, the carbon tetrachloride would disperse into the air and extinguish the fire, but it would also try to extinguish anyone else that would try to breathe the carbon tetrachloride in. Carbon tetrachloride is not produced industrial in the quantities that it used to be anymore, and it's been phased out due to its inherent dangers. I need some carbon tetrachloride, and my bottle is almost empty, meaning I need to find a source. I have a few of these grenades that my neighbor gave me to dispose of. Now let's head over to the fume hood and crack one open. These fire extinguisher grenades are made out of relatively thin glass. So my plan is to use a tungsten carbide knife and to score the top of it. This will allow me to create a weak point which then I will use hot glass to crack it more. And work the crack around the top until it pops off. These carbide knives are very useful in the glass blowing community as you're able to create stress points in almost any shape or any structure that you want which then allows you to break it open. With that line now made, I am going to use hot glass to weaken it. I used the blowtorch just to heat up some random piece of glass that I had, which this will be able to create a stress in the glass by adding a thermal shock to it. We've already created a weak point with the carbine knife, and then just by heating it up slightly with a little bit of water on there, it creates a thermal gradient which creates stress which then allows it to crack and spread around the top of it. You can see the crack spreading as soon as I place it on there. I then use the carbine knife base to move the cut around by tapping on the glass. This impacting allows you to move around and use the cracking to open up the vessel. And then voila, the top breaks right off. I then pour out the carbon tetrachloride into a large beaker. I set the glass off to the side because it still contains some carbon tetrachloride and I don't want that venting into the room. Now I know carbon tetrachloride was used in these grenades but I wonder if this one contains carbon tetrachloride and if it does is the carbon tetrachloride even pure? To check purity I will do a fractional distillation. Distillation is one of the oldest methods of separation. Distillation involves heating one side that contains your mixture that you want to distill until it boils and then it creates a vapor and then you condense that down over to a collection flask over on the other side. The fractional distillation setup is quite similar to a regular distillation. The only difference is the inclusion of a fractional column. This allows a place for the vapor to condense leading to better separation of the mixture. Only a substance that boils at the current temp will make it over to the collection vessel due to these spikes, causing condensation of lower temperature materials. 
Above the column, before the condenser sits a temperature probe. This gives the current temperature of the distillate coming over. We are looking for about 170 degrees Fahrenheit, 76 degrees Celsius for carbon tetrachloride. After the condenser is the collection bottle. We now add the unknown carbon tetrachloride, hopefully to the boiling flask. And then stopper the whole thing up. I made sure to use enough grease on all these joints so no carbon tetrachloride vapor escapes. I then turn on the cooling by turning on the water into the condenser. I didn't have enough tubing to allow me to put that in the proper position. And then after that, I turn on the hot plate. I have the flask just sitting in a sand bath. I then added another thermocouple probe that went into the sand bath, and you can see the flask starting to heat up. Shortly after, it begins to boil. The vapor moves up the column and will hopefully make it over to the condenser at the proper temperature. Boiling picks up. Fractional columns suffer from cooling down too quickly. We can avoid that by wrapping them with aluminum foil to keep the heat in, so that the foil keeps the heat in and allows the vapor to reach the top, where it is then condensed. I noticed that the thermocouple was not properly touching the inside, and as soon as I moved it, it jumped to the proper temperature of carbon tetrachloride. I like collecting the runs with a beginning, middle, and end in different flasks. The middle is what we want, and by doing this switch throughout the distillation, we give a pure product in the end. Before the column reaches the necessary temperature of carbon tetrachloride, impurities may come over. That's why we have this beginning. And then during the temperature range that we need, we get our pure carbon tetrachloride. Then when it starts to get close to the end, we have higher boiling point materials, which are impurities once again. And we collect those in a different flask so that we keep our pure carbon tetrachloride in the middle stage separate from any impurities that we might have in the initial solution. It took around two hours to boil all the solvent from the flask. During the whole boiling time, the temp stayed in the proper carbon tetrachloride range, so we have 99% carbon tetrachloride as the final result. The bottle contains around 500 milliliters, which I have some experiments planned for. Thank you for watching to the end, and consider subscribing, because you watch the end, you might want to subscribe and place a like. I have more content to come and you want to stay up to date on this channel. That is the best way to do so, so if you have any questions drop those in the comments section below or even better join my science discord server. I look forward to seeing you again. Well, I don't
know, but I've been told uranium ore is worth more than gold. I sold my cad, I bought me a Jeep, I got that bug, and I can't sleep. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Uranium fever is spreading all.